Vanessa, and hope y'all doing well. Hey, I am uh, absolutely stoked about today's message, um, and I think today's word is going to be so practical. You know, there's some messages that's like preachy, get you inspired, but I think there's some messages that's just going to help you for your Monday morning, and so I think that today is going to do that for you. Uh, so it, real quick, I want to invite the Holy Spirit to be here in this this time. Ooh, I want to read the scripture real quick. Let, let's do that first. Uh, you turn to that scripture. This is uh, in the book of uh, the book of Matthew and chapter 2. I want to read to you starting in verse 18. It says this. Uh, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit because Joseph uh, because for her, uh, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet he did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Verse 20 says, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because... What, what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. It says this, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Lord, I pray, God, God, whatever we carry in, God, I pray, Lord, that we just may realize that it's from you. And God, I pray, God, that you may speak right to us today. Lord, we love you. God, we give you all the praise. Lord, this is your word. Would you bypass my thoughts, my wisdom, so that we, you can speak right to your people. God, we didn't come here to hear from me, but God, we came here to hear from you. So God, even encourage my soul today, I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Awesome. Well, hey, guys, it's so good to be here. We are in week number three of our series, Sitcoms. And this has been a fun series, and if you've missed uh, any of these um, uh, talks, I, I just want to encourage you to go back to our, our website, our YouTube page to catch up, and uh, because I, there, there is a build-up to this, and so a lot of times my messages are standalone, can, you can understand it, uh, but there is a better revelation and illumination, I believe, that you will get uh, if you are uh, aware of the previous messages. Uh, but we have used uh, sitcoms as a, as a opportunity for us to get a window into the life of a family. And so what we've done is that we've, we've watched kind of old school sitcoms, and, and sitcoms were all about the family. It was all about uh, just how family and friends do life with each other. And in those days, uh, writers and creators, they wanted to give us a window into everyday life. Uh, they wanted to give us a window to what happens in the living room and what happens in the school and what happens in the college dorm room. And so that's what these have all, have all been about. And so I'm not sure if you all have, are very familiar with uh, uh, many, many, uh, many um, you know, uh, sitcoms. But one of my, some of my favorite ones, well, there's this one sitcom that we would watch all the time. Uh, it was called Home Improvement. And, uh, and, and the reason why I love this show is because after I watched this show, we tried to fix things in our house. And we made it even worse. You know what I mean? You know how you watch like a boxing movie and you think you're a boxer afterwards? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, so this is one of the movies that we kind of messed up a lot of things in our house because of this show. Another show, favorite show of mine was A Different World. Anybody watch A Different World? Uh, I wanted to dress like some of these guys, but I wasn't cool enough. I didn't have enough money. Um, I, I could only afford FUBU, and they had like, you know, good, good stuff. So uh, that was another one of my favorite shows growing up. Um, but, you know, in, in these shows, uh, Home Improvement and Different World or, or any most of the sitcoms, there, there was something that always came about. There was always a conflict that happened in these shows. 
um, there was always a fight, whether it's sibling rivalries, whether it's uh, a marital fighting, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a, a parent to a kid uh, a fighting, and a friendship or maybe roommate fighting. And, and life was just filled with these fighting. And, 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 and what I want to do today is, is talk to you on how to fight like Jesus. And I, I want to I help you today on how to deal with conflict because if you live long enough, you will know that life is filled with conflict. With marriage conflict, sibling conflict, uh, teacher conflict, boss conflict, uh, uh, co-worker conflict. We, uh, we, we have all type of conflict and, and, and I'm afraid that many of you have grew up in church and you have not been taught how to deal with conflict. You have not been taught on, on the practical day-to-day -day things that we need to do when we engage in different conflict of our lives. We're going to have it. Some of you are going to have it on the way home today. Some of you had it on the way to church today. Some of you had it just last night. Some of you had it a couple days ago. Some of you had it on Friday as you left your job and you can't stand your coworker. And, and, and so what, what, what I want to do is teach you how to deal with conflict. Because, you know, okay, I'm going to give you an insight into my sermons. Normally in my sermons, I do an intro, I create tension, and then I do teaching, and then I have a climax. I always build up to a climax. And right before my climax comes, I call the worship team back on, and they play really soft worship music to make you seem really spiritual and make the room really nice, right? So that's how I build my sermons every Sunday, right? The intro, tension, teaching, and climax. But right now, I'm going to give you the climax of this sermon. Y'all ready for it? I'm going to give you the climax right now, so I ain't going to have nothing to build to, right? But here's the deal. <laughs> so here's the deal with the climax of the sermon. Conflict is not, the, the Christmas story is not absent of conflict. It is the result of conflict, right? right. right? And so what I want to do is let you know that the reason why we celebrate, like, Christmas, and we know that Jesus wasn't born this time of the year, but we celebrate this time of year. But ho however, I want to let you know that, that the Christmas story is a result of conflict. You think about the story that we just read, it is riddled with conflict. Right. Marriage conflict, fiance con conflict, parent conflict, conflict with God, conflict with friends, and all this conflict that happened. And, 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 and I believe that we, we, there are practical steps that God has given us so that we can walk in this conflict. In fact, I, wanna, I want you to watch, these, uh, watch this first video. Of, of a great example of sibling, uh, sibling conflict. Check this out. <sighs> Hello, Queen Lisa. <gasps> Bart, what are you doing in my room? Lisa, certain differences, rivalries, if you will, have come up between us. At first, I thought we could talk it over like civilized people. But instead, I just ripped the head off Mr. Honey Bunny. Bart, that was your cherished childhood toy. Ah, Mr. Honey Bunny! <laughs> Bart, down, Bart! Bart, just get out of here. Hey, it's a free country. You get out. That doesn't make sense. I know you are, but what am I? Get out, get out! Okay, but on my way, I'm going to be doing this. <laughs> if you get hit, it's your own fault. Okay, then I'm going to start kicking air like this. And if any part of you should fill that air, uh, it's your own fault. I better go check that out. Now. Well, I, I feel like most of our conflict is like that. You know, sometimes when we fight, like we're just going to start swinging. Like, this, if anybody, if anything is in the way, you're going to get in trouble, right? Especially when you're fighting like a sibling. I mean, you just start throwing blows, and you don't know who's going to get hit or what's going to go hit. And I feel like sometimes that's how we deal with conflict. Our eyes are closed, and we're just swinging, and we're swinging, and we're trying to survive, and we're trying to win a fight. We're trying to win an argument. We're trying to win a, a point or win, or win a battle. And I want to let you know, that's not how we deal with conflict, right? Like, sometimes, like, because we have been so inept, and because we have been so... Uh, 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 not knowing how to deal with conflict. Here's the deal. I believe that we have, we have destroyed our lives and other people's lives as well. And I think the more we be become uh, a, a strong understanding of conflict and how to deal with fighting in the context of a biblical context, I believe there will be so much healing. Because here's the deal. I am not afraid of conflict. 
conflict is not bad, right? Like conflict is good. It produced the Christmas story. It produced Jesus coming to the world. Like I am not a, conflict is simply a, a, a resolve to get the clarity. Right? So for, for me, I don't run away from conflict. So, like, so in the Christian world, you have these two pendulums that people have, right? You have where people use conflict to run away from. Then you have people use conflict to hurt people. But I believe there is a, a, a middle that we're supposed to be living in when it comes, from, when it comes to the idea of conflict. Right? I, I feel like some of us, man, we, we don't know how to fight at all. And I want you to write this, watch this next clip. One of my favorite fight clips of all time when it comes to us dealing with with conflict. Check this out. Isn't that great, y'all? What, what happens when your living room turns into a boxing ring? Like, what happens when the place that's supposed to be for family becomes the place of fighting? And I think that it happens all the time. It's a part of life. There's conflict in marriage. There's conflict with siblings. There's conflict in relationships with roommates. And oftentimes, we have not been learned and taught how to deal with conflict. None of us know how to fight the right way. And so today what we're going to do is learn the stance and learn the ways of how you fight. The first thing you need to do when it comes to fighting, and my first point is this, you have to have the right position. The right position. And here, and, and I got this idea uh, from this guy named uh, Holyfield, who was one of the, one of the greatest fighters in the, in the 90s and early 2000s. And he was famous for beating Mike Tyson uh, two times. And, and this is the guy who Mike Tyson bit his, almost his whole ear off. And, uh, and in a recent interview, uh, uh, some pe- somebody was asking him, uh, a younger fighter was asking him, tell me, tell me about some of the tricks of the trade that you had when they came in the boxing ring. And he said this. He says this, I always had the right position so that in any place of the ring, I had one ear towards my coach. Meaning that there was never a place in the boxing ring where he could not hear the voice of his coach. Because he realized that his coach had a, a, a better perspective of what's going on in the fight than he did. Because oftentimes when we're in the middle of an argument, in the middle of a conflict, in the middle of a rivalry, what happens is we're so close, we have a very limited perspective on the situation. And so Holyfield said this. He said at any area of the ring, he always kept one ear towards his corner because he knew that there was voices and there was wisdom coming from his corner that gave him a better position to fight in the fight. And I I just want to encourage you, like, and maybe the quick question is, who's in your corner today? Right, because I think that sometimes when we enter into conflict, we we move to a, a position where we cannot hear the voice of the Holy Spirit coming from our corner today. And I just want to encourage you, you can't deal with conflict without the voice of the Holy Spirit in your corner. You can't deal with conflict without another perspective in your corner, right? 
Like, and I just want to encourage you all with that because oftentimes we're engaging in these fights, in these physical battles, but we have no one or the wrong one in our corner. You know what I'm talking about, about the wrong one? The, you, some of you, you may not have no one in your corner, and you listen to the voices of yourself, and so yourself is telling you how to fight and how to win a battle, and that she did this, or he did that, or you should do that, or make them feel bad for doing that, and that's the voice of yourself. But then you have another voice, the voices, the negative voices in your corner that you got to get out of your corner today. You know those negative voices that are in your corner that's telling you to do this and do that? Could you imagine all the voices in Joseph's corner when his fiance was pregnant? Could you imagine Joseph's little sister in his corner saying, I can't believe she did that to you. In, a shenane, in my shenane voice, you know what I mean? I can't believe she did that to you. She's supposed to be your fiance, and she acting like she Beyonce. And she's sleeping around, and she's pregnant, and she's doing this and doing that. Could you imagine the voice that was in his ear? And he had a voice in his ear, and the Bible says that he was thinking about divorcing her. He was thinking about not, not kind of putting her out in public shame because he had a voice in his ear, but then another voice kept in. The voice of God stepped into his corner and said, no way, hey, hey, it's not that situation. It's not what you think it is. She's not sleeping around. In fact, she's pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And it was only because of the voice that was in his corner that spoke to him in the middle of a conflict, in the middle of a battle, that gave him a different perspective and revelation of the fight that he was engaging in. Can I encourage you all today that you need to be intentional by putting the right voices in your corner? So can I just kind of get real, like really real today? If you're, if you're married here today, uh, can I encourage you just from the bottom of my heart, like you should get some people who've been married longer than you in your corner. Nobody gives me an amen to that point, right? Okay, another one. If, if, you're, if you're seeking for financial freedom in your life, you shouldn't have broke people in your corner. Come on, come on. Can I get an amen to that, y'all? Come on. Like, so, so what, I'm, what I'm saying is that so many people, you, like, you have people in your corner, but they're not the right people. So they're giving you a perspective of the fight that you're engaging in, like, oh, you should divorce him. I can't believe he did that. Or I can't believe she did that. I can't believe I'm talking like this in the middle of my sermon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you have these voices in your ear that saying certain things. So for me, intentionally right now, my, the season of life right now, I am craving for voices in my corner who reminds me of the Holy Spirit and who's going to move me forward to the places I want to be in life. Yes. Can I encourage you all to be practical about the voices that you have in your ear? Yes. Who's in your corner today? Yes. Like who, who, who's speaking into you? Do you have any mentors? Do you have any friends who love Jesus? Do you have any people, married couples, that's speaking into your marriage? Do you have anybody that's, that's, that's giving you the perspective of the Holy Spirit in your life today? So every point of the fight, Holyfield says, I always have an ear towards my corner. So he always had a perspective. So now when you have conflict with your spouse or your coworker or your roommate or your friend or your fiance or, or just anybody that you have conflict in this life, you now have a different perspective. And if you try to fight that fight with your limited perspective, you will not only hurt you, but you will hurt the people around you. And some of us, we're the victims of people fighting fights. We're not the right voice in the corner. So you always have to position yourself in the middle of the fight that there is another voice that's speaking to you. And practical example, before you get into a conflict and before you have a hard conversation, you probably should spend some time in prayer. You probably should just upgrade the voice in your corner and say, God, I'm about to go into this difficult conversation, and I pray that my flesh and my limited perspective and my limited experience don't come out, but I pray that you give me the perspective of a coach, the perspective of something, someone who's outside of the ring. Because let me tell you this, like God is so big, he's so much bigger than your, our small conflicts that we have at work or at home, and he's so much bigger than that. And I believe that sometimes before the ring starts in 
our living room. We need to go to our prayer room and ask God to give me wisdom so that I can fight this fight the right way. Right? Are you with me today? So number one, you got to have position. you got to position yourself that you're always listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And the voice of the Holy Spirit could be other people, godly people that the Holy Spirit used to speak into your life. Right? And so the reason why we have church, the reason why the Bible, the, the early church got together and they gathered together like we're doing today, the reason why they did it so faithfully and so constantly, here's why. Because they were in the middle of a battle. And so they would come together, and they would rub shoulders with each other, and they would say, hey, man, I'm going through this. I got this going on in my marriage. I got this going on at work. I got this going on in my business. I got all this stuff going on. And then you have all these other perspectives of people who love Jesus and who's connected to the Holy Spirit. And so now your, your corner is so strong. It's so robust. And I want to encourage you all today. All the great fighters have great people in their corner. Uh, my, my professor will always uh, say this uh, in, in growing up in, in Bible college. He always say that I am like a turtle on a fence. And he says, one thing you know about a turtle that's on a fence is that that turtle did not get there by himself. Meaning that he was the result of people in his corner. When you upgrade your corner, you upgrade your life. And I, can I encourage you, if you can upgrade with the Holy Spirit and put people in your corner who speak nothing but God's word in there, I'm telling you, you will go to the next level and you will fight like a pro. So, so not only do you got to have good position, but you also, and when it comes to good fighting, you got to have good posture. Your stance has to be a certain way, right? You, you, you can't be slouching. You can't be just hanging out like this. You got to have a good stance. And, 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 and most fighters say your, your stance will determine how you fight, and it will determine the effectiveness of your fight. And so, therefore, you got to have a good stance. You got to have a good offense because if you don't have a good offense, like you don't have a good defense, and some fighters, like the great fighters, know how to take the fight to the opponent. They know how to not just kind of wait around and just wait for the, the fight to happen, but they know how to take the fight to the opponent. They, they say Mike Tyson was a was a, was was he was a animal when he got into that ring. He took the fight to the opponent, and I love that. Like we're called to take something to our opponents, but it's not a fight. We're we're called to take peace to our opponents. The Bible says in Matthew chapter five, it says this: "Blessed are those who are the peace." makers. Like the verb peacemaker is an aggressive term. It's an offensive term. It's a term that says, hey, you know what? I'm going to bring peace to this situation. I'm not going to wait till peace comes or shows up. I'm going to bring it to the situation. And if you want to know how to fight, and if you want to know how to engage in conflict and rivalry, you have to be a person who brings peace to the situation. I mean, you got to bring it to it. And so literally, so Joseph, he knew how to bring peace because first he had the voice of the God, and then he brought peace to the situation. And I love it. And I just want to encourage you all today that your, that your stance matters because most of our stance are aggressive stance. And the reason why people can't listen to you, or maybe your spouse can't listen to you, because your stance is so aggressive. Maybe you have a friend, you have a conflict with a friend, and the reason why they can't really understand you is because your stance is all wrong. You have a stance to hurt somebody, and God says, I need you to have a stance to bring peace to somebody. And can I encourage you all, like your stance matters, and so if you're going to engage in conflict with people, you can't just go, hey, I got to talk to you right now. I mean, what do you think that's going to do to somebody, right? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, what, what, what would it do? Like, how would I, Gwen, how would you feel if I come to you right now? Like, hey, get over here right now. I got to talk to you right now. You come right now two feet from me because we got to talk about what you did last night. I cannot believe you made that sweet potato pie with too much cinnamon inside that sweet potato pie. You got to come talk to me right now. <laughs> Sister. I mean, what would that be? Or, hey, you know what? Hey, hey we need to talk about something. We need to get on the same page about something. There is a different response when your stance is different. And so can I just, please, can I tell you what about conflict? Like, your stance matters. Like, even your body posture matters, right? It, 
it matters, like, how you approach somebody, right? And, and I just, I, it's so funny how, like, I see it all the time when I'm doing marriage counseling and husbands, like, they're, they're, they're approaching their wives. Like, they, it's like a boxer they're about to knock out. And I'm like, man, that's not how you do it. Or even vice versa. That's, you're not creating the atmosphere of peace. So your, your position matters, but your, your posture is really important. Like the way you hold yourself is really important. And Joseph had a posture like none other. Joseph knew how to bring peace to a situation. And I'm going to tell you this, peace, bringing peace to a situation is not easy. It's, it's hard. It's somewhat frustrating. It's, it's somewhat, it's, it's, it's a long process. It's not the quick process. When you bring peace to a situation, here's what you're doing. You're saying that even if you were wrong and I was right, God still loves both of us. Now, that's another level. Now, that's peace. Now, when you bring that to the conflict, then you become a great fighter. And here's how I learned, right? So, like, so, um, y- y- y'all know that kind of, that there's a slogan that says, kill them with kindness. Right. You know, like, there, there's a scripture, there's a proverb that talks about that. And it says this, when, whenever you're kind to someone who's not kind to you, it's almost like you are putting hot coals on top of their head. Now, that hurts. You, you, you want to win a battle and you want to become a great fighter? Be kind. Just be kind, be nice. And they're not being nice back. It's going to hurt them more than they hurt you. You know, like this Lord has to say, God bless you. Like, I love you. Right? Like, it's, 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 just, it's just the fact of the matter. So that there's this one particular person, uh, I'm not going to mention names. When I was a pastor, not to this church. So you're good. Are you all clear? So I, I, I remember, like, this one particular person will always just gossip about me. Just got gossip. They just gossip about me and just, oh, he's too extra. Oh, he's, oh, he's not a good preacher at all. And it's just stuff, just random petty stuff, you know, petty spaghetti stuff. Um, and so I just remember, like, just being so nice to that person. Like, how you doing? God bless you. Hey, how can I be praying for you? Hey, man, how... how how, how y'all do, how, how's your family doing? Do you need anything? How can the church serve you? How can the church love? And I knew in the back of my head, she is getting knocked out right now, right? You want to know how to win a battle? Be nice. And I think that's a, like a principle that God gave us, the reason why we should bring peace because when we bring peace, it acts like a peace, right? Oh, that's a, that's a good, y'all get that? None of y'all got it. None of y'all got it. None of y'all got it. That's a Medea joke. Come on, somebody. <laughs> when you bring peace, it acts like a peace. You know what I mean? Okay, cool, 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 cool. But we don't, we don't want to be shooting people in our church, though, right? We don't, want to, we don't want to hurt somebody. But what I'm saying is, the point that I'm trying to make is this. Is that when you bring peace to a situation, even if the person don't accept the peace, it's going to end up hurting them more than it hurts you. So what I'm, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that be kind to people. And be real about it. Don't just kind of be kind so that you can get back at them. Right? But be real about it. Just be nice and bring peace to every situation. And you allow God to take care of the rest. Right? That's how you deal with conflict. So number one, you got, you got to have a good position. Secondly, you got to have good posture. And number three, my last point is that you got to have great perspective. You got to have good perspective. So... Uh, so, I, I, so one, one of the fighters was saying that um, uh, what he does is that he kind of, he spends the first round filling them out, the next three rounds trying to be aggressive, and then the next two rounds, what he's trying to do is find where the opponent is hurting the most, right? So the great fighters know where their opponent is hurting the most. They know where it's at. So it could be a rib shot that he did earlier. Or it could be like in his eye, his eyes about to bust open. And so a great fighter knows how to find those weak spots in their opponent so that they can knock their opponent out. Like that's what the great fighters do. That's what they all do. They're all great at it. They all love doing it. And, 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 and that's just what they do. But here's the thing about, about like what we do. We don't find the hurt and the pain to bring more pain. We find the hurt and the pain so that we can bring healing to it. You want to become a good fighter like God? You want to fight like Joseph? 
You want to fight like, like Jesus? You find the pain where they're hurting at the most so that you can bring healing to it and not exposure, condemnation, or issues to it. And so literally, if you're in the middle of an argument and God gives you a perspective like, man, y'all arguing about money, but there's something way deeper than that. And God gives you a perspective, or a word of knowledge of an issue that your spouse was having long years ago. Or maybe you, you, your, your roommate, you're having issues with your roommate as it's conflict, as conflict. And y'all arguing with each other and y'all hurting each other. But normally, and most of the time, hurt people hurt people. So here's the deal. So if you can become a great fighter and find where they're hurting at the most, then you, are, you will become so effective in the kingdom of God. You will become so useful for God if you know how to find the weak spots and bring healing to it and not pain to it. You got to learn how to find it. You know, the Christmas story really is all about like, like Jesus, him, him finding a weak spot. We had sin. Like we, we were created in the image of God. You, you know the story. We were created by God. We were created to, to, to rule the land. We were created to, to have dominion over this world. We, we were created in the image of God. Like, it, it, like he, we were his masterpiece. We were the people that, that God used and God had a mirror. He had this large cosmic mirror and as he looked at himself, he created each one of us and he kept looking at himself and he created all of us. And, but then he saw one massive weak spot that we had. And the weak spot that we all had was sin. So as a result of the weak spot, he didn't it just expose our weak spot. You know what he did? He came down on this earth so he can get close to our weak spot. So that eventually he can bring healing to our weak spot. The spots that we're hurting. I'm telling you what, today, you want to fight. I, I, I dare you to find the root problems that people are dealing with that you have conflict with, and I dare you to bring healing and prayer to those points. I promise you will see something great. I'm, I'm telling you all the time, like all the time. So like, so, so even like when I have issues, you know, conflict with my, my marriage, where I'm looking for, hey, where is she really hurting? Because I know it really wasn't about me being five minutes late to dinner. It's something way more than that. Like, oh, oh where, where, where is he? Why is he so angry? Why is, why is he so mad? I know it's more than just because I didn't cook his favorite meal. I know there's something deeper. Is it, is it, 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 does he not feel fulfilled? Does he not feel like he matters or he's respect? There, there is a deeper hurt to him. So what I'm trying to let you know is that you want to be a great fighter. I dare you to find where the root pain is coming from. And when you find it, you don't hurt it anymore. You don't hit it anymore. What you do is that you bring the healing power of God to it. You begin to pray for it. You begin to say, I'm walking with you. I understand where you come from. I may not feel what you feel, but I'm there. I see it. I see your pain. I see what you're going through. I see how it's hurting you. I see how you've been walking with that burden for many years. I see how that person long ago has hurting you. I see it. I see it. I see it. And when you respond like that, I'm telling you what, you will become a fighter like Jesus. You will become a fighter like a pro. And I want to encourage you all today. There was this massive conflict between us and God. Massive battle. I mean, it was cosmic. So much so, the Bible records in Genesis that he flooded the earth and he repented that he even created us in general. Conflict. Fight. Flood happens. The rain goes away. Noah and his family comes off the off the ark of the cup, off the ark, and he they gets off. They have kids and they sin right away. Sin comes back. Conflict begins again. They have a whole bunch of a whole bunch of kids, and Israel grows and grows and grows. And the Bible says that they end up because of Joseph end up in Egypt. They grow and grow and grow. They get in bondage. And God put them in bondage because they were far away from God. They call out to God. God set us free. They get set free from Egypt. 
they wander in the wilderness for 40 years because of conflict between them and God. They just couldn't get it together, right? Like, and that's like the, that's the conflict. You know, oh, oh, uh, so later on in the scripture they see how, oh, we want a king. God says, I thought I was your king. God says, I thought I was the one who was going to deliver you. No, we want a man king. They, hide, they get Saul. Saul's not good enough. And so they get David, who is a representation of Jesus, a type of Jesus. And I, I just want to, I want to encourage you. There was this massive conflict between us and God. And what God did in the massive conflict was he found the pain and he got close to it. And now he, he's so close, he became the God with us, the Emmanuel. So now he can bring healing to your pain. I want to encourage you all today that you are hurting in places right now that no one knows about. And God says, I'm here now. And I see it. And I want to bring healing to you. Maybe some of you today, you got issues and maybe you got conflict, unresolved conflict with a loved one. I know it's holiday season and I know how it arrives. Maybe you have a hurt and a pain or a conflict you've been running away from and God says you need to engage into it. Maybe you got some unforgiveness in your heart for someone that you love that's close to you. It could be a father or a mom. It could be a sibling. It could be a kid, co-worker or, or roommate. Maybe you got some unresolved conflict in you. And God says, get your position, get your posture, and get your perspective. Posture, right? The posture is you, you knowing like you, you knowing that you're going to bring peace. Position is you hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Your perspective, you're seeing the pain, not as a result to hurt you, as a result to you can bring healing to it. When you get those three P's together, I believe that you will become a great fighter. Are you with me this morning? Come on, can you stand to your feet? Come on, can you give God a hand clap of praise today? Come on, could you close your eyes today? Could you close your eyes? Could you invite God into your heart today? Maybe some of you, you, there's been, you